Now this is the plate that is going to get especially evangelical Protestant Christians absolutely confused and up in arms and wanting to research whatever and saying that this is wrong. This is Billy Graham. Look at his handshake. He is a known Freemason, Truman, and Billy Graham is what's known, my mother says he's the po Protestant Pope, and that's exactly what he is. Look at that as a young man and that pressure on that knuckle. Clearly a Masonic handshake. In addition to that, he puts the hand over his chest as a sign of respect. You can read about this in The Deadly Deception. They actually had to take Billy Graham's name out of this in order for this to get published. So Jim Shaw, former high-level Freemason, says that Billy Graham was at a 33rd degree ceremony. That means he is a high-level Freemason. The clergy and the craft, you can read about Billy Graham and his support of the Nimolais. There are, there are thoughtful, concerned young people who seek to correct the errors in moral navigation that have been made by their elders intelligently and responsibly. Uh, these are the young people upon which the hope of America's future rests and the Demolays are part of this group. May God richly bless the Demolays as they continue their good work. The clergy and the craft, Reverend Forrest D. Haggard, Billy Graham, supported the Demolays. There's Demolay himself. This is uh, uh, the Demolays uh, in their rituals. You see the pyramid in the background, the Masonic checkered floor. Here is uh, one of the founders of the Demolay, or one of the uh, 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 patriarchs of the Demolays, building Freemasonry through Demolay. You can see all of these logos here. Moving on with Billy Graham. Billy Graham only got to his position because he had support. William Randolph Hearst, the media mogul. If you've ever been to that Hearst Castle, it is fantastic as far as the opulence and money that it took to build that Hearst Castle. There's also a lot of occult symbology there and all of the ancient mystery religion embedded into that architecture. Los Angeles Times Billy Graham recalls help from Hearst. Evangelist Billy Graham recalls in his new book the pivotal point in his young ministry when during a 1949 Los Angeles crusade a two-word directive from publisher William Randolph Hearst to Puff Graham made him an instant celebrity worldwide. He had help and the media has been on his side. The sudden front page cover uh, coverage showed on Graham by Hearst newspapers in mid-October after three weeks of little notice was quickly matched by other newspapers and news magazines, literally a media circus descending on his rallies under a big tent. Billy Graham on Time magazine. Wow. Exalting a preacher. Putting him in the status of the preacher and the president's. He has almost passed away now, very old. Look at him as a young man hanging out with presidents, not rebuking them. Hanging out with fellow Freemasons, secret society members. Oh boy, in the Bible it says that Satan can transform himself into an angel of light and no marvel don't marvel at all that his ministers can transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Look at what they look like and feel like and act like. And if this man is against Christianity with his doctrines on homosexuality, they are simply shaking hands. Billy Graham and his friends. The challenge of Billy Graham, you can see in this book and his use of this uh, hand to heart, whether or not that is the lion's paw, uh, but it looks very uh, Masonic as a pose. Billy Graham and his friends, you can read all about this. Kathy Burns is a wonderful researcher uh, into symbology and what type of agenda he was with. His agenda was ecumenism. And he here he is with a pope. And it was noted that in his crusades, when Catholics came, they sent Catholics back to Rome. And so he did his part in bringing Ro uh, evangelical world back to the Church of Rome. The Pope is almost an evangelist, so adoring the Pope. Look what he did with the Halley's Bible Handbook. This is the Billy Graham Crusade Edition. Uh, when it was first published, it exposed the Catholic Church for the evil that it was. 
he purchased the rights of the book and took out that commentary on the Catholic Church completely. And there is the Billy Graham edition. And when he was uh, publishing uh, the the uh, Halley's Bible Commentary, his version shot up to 250,000 copies annually, uh, more than any other year uh, when it was published. Billy Graham, why did he remove the warnings about Rome from Halley's Bible Handbook? Because he was in alliance with Rome. Unholy alliances, secret plan, and the secret people who are working to destroy America. You can read about that. His friendship with uh, Bishop Sheen. There he is. With the Pope again as an older man. Now you can say, I've heard Billy Graham speak and his messages are, are awesome. And I'm going to tell you that it's not to say that you can get salvation from a Billy Graham message. But I'm telling you, look at the motive of the entire organization and where it moves into. And I believe that this is one lesson we have to learn. That these organizations are begun and the ultimate goal is ecumenism, getting things back and apostasy. And look at what has was from the beginning. He accepts awards from Catholic universities, hangs out with Catholics, accepts the Templeton Award, the Templeton Prize. It just so happens that another person that we know of, the Dalai Lama, accepted the Templeton Prize as well. Look at the intermingling of faiths going on. This only leads down this type of path. Monks now praying in the Vatican or meditating in the Vatican. There's a difference between prayer and meditation. Billy Graham and Paul and Jan Crouch. That's a very peculiar handshake there, and I'm not saying that it is, but very peculiar going on. Please understand, does this look like Christianity to you? It's a joke. And this is a double-tiered effect on intelligence uh, and how they operate. They make you turn away from Christianity because this is what you see on television. They want you away from Christianity. And then they want those Christians that are completely ignorant to follow this. It's a double-tiered effect. Here's Paul... Uh, Crouch now shaking hands with the Pope, the adoration of this man in Rome. Billy Graham and Dr. Schuler. I believe Schuler is a, um, oh gosh, I think it's an Oral Roberts uh, graduate. I'm not sure if that's true. I do know that uh, Norman Vincent Peale um, uh, was involved with uh, Robert Schuler and got him started, and he's a known Freemason. Look at this hand sign that he does. It's very similar to the Freemason, Jesse Jackson's hand sign. Look at this. It looks like a down uh, uh, triangle. Here it is again on a magazine. But uh, Gorbachev coming, whether or not that is the handshake or not, I'm just saying that they're intermingling everything. Now, here is uh, Kenneth Copeland. This is Oral Roberts and his son. Look at what they do. Look at their university, Oral Roberts University. And this down-pointing triangle representing Earth and man, or whatever you want to call it, but the occult symbology going on. Look at the architecture. Look at these hands praying, but look at Kenneth Copeland and his ministries. You have the square and the compass. Just to show you that this university has produced also Joel Olstein, Oral Roberts University. The apostasy going on. Does God want you to be rich? This prosperity gospel. Look how many people have their ears itched and tickled by this man who accepts everyone, including Mormons, and saying that they are Christian. No judgment. Nothing. He's not preaching the whole word. Jesus warned us specifically. This man is not about warning at all. Moving on. Jerry Falwar, the leader of the moral majority, this idea that the right-wing Republican Christian uh, has a moral responsibility to vote this country. And look at what he's done uh, to uh, uh, divide us completely on politics. Getting into politics as a Christian and getting into that realm is an adoration of man. You want to please men. Get the vote so you can get voted in. And you have to watch what you say. And if you say the hard things, believe me, you're not ever 
going to get elected if you're preaching the gospel in that fashion. So you are a an epitome of compromise in that fashion. Here's Benny Hinn swinging his coat around and knocking people over. And the how many people does he attract that way? Dressed in white, looking all like... <laughs> it's obvious. Here's Jerry Falwell embracing the Reverend Sung Hyun Moon of the Moonies, a cult. That's that man, supposed Christian right-wing winger, hanging out with Sung Hyun Moon. Get away from me. Don't let me take a picture with you that people can see. Now look at Liberty University, Jerry Falwell's University, Liberty University, who's giving the commencement speech, none other than Mitt Romney, the Mormon. Wake up, people. Understand what these are. Just research it for yourself and who they're hanging out with and what they're doing. I'm telling you, true Christianity is not this, and it's rarely above ground anymore. They play Christianity, and Rome has infiltrated the churches. The Council of Trent. Vatican II is all about ecumenical, the ecumenical movement, bringing all everybody back to Rome, all of the churches together. Understand that they infiltrate. They are in the churches. They hide in the churches. This is Sung Hyun Moon, and this is a. Uh, there were senators involved here of crowning them uh, Messiah, uh, and this is a cult. These Moonies funded the Council for National Policy. Here is Tim LaHaye. And he's supposed to be an evangelical. New York Times Left Behind series, Tim LaHaye. I want you to understand this. This is about the rapture and being left behind. It's a New York Times, I know you can't see it here, a New York Times best-selling uh, author. Best-selling series. This is an example of fantasizing reality. It has a double-tiered effect. If you're a non-Christian, you see this series and it's, it's left behind. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, what a fantasy. Um, uh, I don't believe in that nonsense. As a Christian, you look at this series and you go, oh yeah, I, I believe in that. They now say these Christians are crazy. And he has a pre-tribulation doctrine. You can look that up. It's a rapture before the tribulation. And it has an effect of being uh, telling you that it is against uh, that uh, that doctrine is not valid. So there are layers of, of how they do things, um, but Council for National Policy was funded by Tim LaHaye. Tim LaHaye uses the cross and the crown. That is Templar Freemasonry, York Rite, also in the Prophecy Study Bible. And you have the use of the A, uh, the Masonic style A. But interesting things going on, and I'm telling you, if they are national uh, New York Times bestsellers, if they are on TV, please just look into it. That doesn't mean that some of their doctrines and their studies are valid. They just have a method uh, and a purpose on the media level to sway people away from Christianity when they do this type of thing. The Bible says don't put your trust in men at all, and this is the lesson of this plate, at all. And uh, just put your trust in God. That's it. No man should be trusted. All men are liars, the Bible says. So research it for yourself. Look at the Word of God and uh, count that as truth rather than throw it all away in this case because I believe your soul is at stake. Here's the uh, 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 Will Smith. He's doing the sign of the claw or the lion's paw. Here is now the evangelist, uh, Pat Robertson, doing the lion's paw. You can see in Morals and Dogma and Freemasonry, the lion's grip, the lion's paw. Here's Osiris. The occult has their own born-again experience. And you can see it clearly that the Masonic sign is this lion's paw on Time magazine. The This man is a uh, son of a senator, uh, and they gather the Christian right-wing crowd. Rick Warren. This man is powerful because they let him be powerful. His whole thing is purpose-driven. They implement uh, uh, church growth uh, 
uh, formulas for growing your church and not saying the hard things. Purpose Driven Life, now translated in many languages. Hugely successful book. Look at him hanging out with presidents. Same thing, calling Jesus Isa to the Muslims and now moving into this ecumenical, a common word saying that the God of the Muslims is the same as the God of uh, the Bible. And so here they are, hanging out with Muslims. This Accord for One Peace. He's a council for national, I'm sorry, uh, a council on foreign relations uh, member. High level. Him speaking at Muslim. He brought a Muslim into his church at TED Talks. It's all about purpose. If you find your purpose, that that's what God wants you to do. Nothing about the gospel message on this national, international stage. Many scientists and, and uh, of all walks of life come and speak at TED, uh, uh, you know, high-level uh, people come there. Look at now the next Billy Graham, T.D. Jakes. What does he do? A life on purpose. Same thing. If you can find your passion, uh, that's your purpose. And hanging out with the New Ager, Oprah, uh, having a good time, and look at the Life Class Tour. Tony Robbins, Deepak Chopra, all religions here. He's not talking about Jesus. He even calls Jesus the product. Merchandising Jesus. Let's wake up. 30,000 people in his church. This man here is his influence is huge in the, in the evangelical world. Understand what's going on and get wise to it. 